Hey guys, in this video we are going to be setting up the WiseCam Outdoor into the Wise app and setting up the bridge and getting it all connected and ready to go. If you missed my last unboxing video of the new WiseCam Outdoor starter bundle, check that video out. I will leave a card right up here and then come back to this one. So let's get started. What's up guys, it's Drew from Taylor Tech and on this channel we do smart home tech reviews, installations, and DIY guides. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any time, check out the video description for show notes and product links for everything mentioned in this video. So we have the new WiseCam Outdoor Bridge as well as the new WiseCam Outdoor here. Like I said in my last video, we did the unboxing and got everything ready to go. And in this video, we are going to be setting it up in the app. So what we have here is the camera itself and the bridge. I have the power plug for the bridge right here. So we'll plug the bridge in. We have an amber uh, LED light there. And here's the camera in this back panel here. Like you saw in the last video, we have the micro USB card, micro USB card slot and the power uh, toggle switch here so I'll slide that over to on and we have a blue LED light on the back which is solid I'm not sure how much battery they include here um, so I am going to go ahead and plug this into this included USB outlet because since they didn't include an adapter in the box to charge the camera I'm going to just go ahead and get it plugged in here I assume that's how they want you to do it and now we have a flashing blue light on the bridge and a, I'm guessing a battery charging symbol, which is a flashing red on the back of the camera. All right, so we're in the WISE app now, and I'm just going to go ahead and add a new device, just like anything else. And WISE Cam Outdoor and WISE Base Station is both showing up there now. And if we go ahead and let's start with the base station. Connect your mobile device to your network, already done. Plug the base station into power and your router. Well, it's not plugged into my router. I do not have the ethernet jack plugged in at the moment. I was under the impression you could do this through Wi-Fi, so let's go ahead and just try. I would assume you should be able to do it over Wi-Fi, but we'll find out. All right, so it looks like the base station does need to be plugged into the router. I was under the impression that it could be that you could connect to the Wi-Fi network that the bridge broadcasts itself and then, you know, connect to it, just like setting up a version 2 WISE camera, and then you can put in your own Wi-Fi credentials and then it will connect to that. Apparently that's not the case, so we do have to plug the Ethernet jack into the bridge. Now let's go ahead and try to set up the camera first then. Looks like you need to set up a base station. Okay, there you go. You need to set up a base station, then the outdoor camera. So I will go grab an ethernet cable that's long enough to reach from my router to the studio here. What they include is, looks like a four foot cable or something like that. That's not gonna work in my case. All right, let's go find a cable. Go on to the switch. Here's my network switch uh, I think I have an extra cable hopefully it's long enough this one uh, yes sorry for the shakiness it's not expecting to have to come in here today all right that should be good by the way this is kind of my in the works uh, tidying up my server area so it's a new switch I got needed to upgrade anyway let's see if this reaches It's close. Get some more slack. So I got some more slack and we are long enough now. 
So it's kind of a pain in the butt that you have to do that. Obviously it won't be as big of an issue for you guys because you won't have to run a cord to your studio like I have. You could just use the included one and do this next to your router. Still kind of a pain in the butt either way. So we'll plug that in. We're supposed to wait for a solid blue flashing or change from flashing blue to solid blue on the bridge. I will go to add a base station on here again. And now we have solid blue light. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it is now solid blue. And we do have to make sure that our Wi-Fi on our phone is connected to the same network that our Ethernet is plugged into in case you're running more than one network. And there we go. We'll name this device. Um, I mean, I'd like to keep this in the server room that you just saw. So I'll call it server room. I'm not sure if the signal from this will reach all the way to where I want to put this camera, but it's only one way to find out. So I will try that first. And we'll do the server upgrade. Always suggested to do that. All right, it looks like our firmware update is complete. We have a solid blue light on the bridge once again, and we are ready to pair our camera. So I will click add wise cam outdoor. It says flip the power switch to on, which it is on. Keep cam within six feet of the base station. If the light does, does not turn on, please plug in your camera to charge. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this just so we can get some good indication lights here. And we have a solid blue light on the camera now. Press the sync button on the bottom of the cam. The bridge is now flashing orange and blue. I'll press, press the sync button on the bottom of the camera. Let me get rid of this. Okay. Honestly scared me a little bit. Now we have flashing blue and yellow on the back of the camera as well. Speaker sounds pretty good. Um, I will put this in the, um, where am I gonna put this camera? Probably all over the place, but I'll just say driveway for now. My current camera that was there took a crap, so I do need a new one there. It wasn't a wise cam, it was some generic camera. Uh, I will not share the device right now. I will, let's continue to mounting. So, wow, it walks you through how to mount the thing. That's pretty cool. So we got anchors, um, the M3 screws, which they included, and you'll need a screwdriver. Oh, okay, that's cool. So it tells you to keep the bridge where you want it and take the camera outside, wherever that may be, and it'll check the Wi-Fi signal strength, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it from where we're at right now, which it's gotta have really good <laughs> strength, I would hope. I'm gonna peel this off the lens also. Great connection, I would sure hope so. And there's options to mount to the ceiling and the wall. You mount it to the ceiling here. Goes like that, or to the wall, same idea. I will, I'll just select wall. What is going on? My phone is freaking out right now. Let's select ceiling this time. There we go. So there's a nice little video on how to set this thing up. Okay, so now that it walked you through how to get this thing um, securely attached to your wall or ceiling, uh, it now says that you can add any new outdoor camera without having to really go through the app, I guess, just by pressing the sync button on the bridge and the camera at the same time. Okay, one last thing, physically adjust your wise cam outdoor device so that the highlighted area is within the detection zone. You can obviously do this later in the detection settings. All right, so I let the camera charge for a couple of hours now. It actually charged pretty quick. I left it plugged in to the bridge via the USB cable, via the USB port on the bridge, and it charged in about, I didn't pay that close attention. I would say about three hours it charged up. That was the last time I checked and it was at 100%. It is still plugged in. Um, just so I could show you that it does still work while it's plugged in. 
but this uh, prompt does come up and it tells you to uh, remember to close the charging port all the way before placing it outside. And I read somewhere before that it will void the warranty if you use it while it's charged. I don't know how true that is. I need to look more into that for the full review. But I would imagine the reason for that is you can't have the little flap, the water protection flap, closed if it's plugged in. So that being said, it will work still um, just fine. It didn't really seem any different than if it was working off of its battery and not charging. But like I said, if you need to keep it outside, which is what these are for, then you will need to either find a different way to protect it, but it may or may not void the warranty if you keep this flap open. So that being said, we are completely wire free now and we are we have a live view on the camera and it doesn't look too much different than what a version two would look like. Um, it's a little bit grainy. That's probably just some compression. Um, nothing really, no surprises so far. Looks pretty good. Um, you know, same latency, same kind of picture quality. We'll get back to, you know, the full review later, of course, like I keep saying. Um, as far as our options, we have our sound. Um, we can talk. We can record, take a photo. Pretty standard stuff there. You can turn on motion, uh, motion tagging, do a time lapse, and a scheduled recording. So in the event recordings uh, setting here, you can turn on and off motion detection, and you can actually change the cooldown recording time you have a lot of false alarms that you notice beginning obviously it's good to change your settings your detection settings but if you do need to change that cooldown to anywhere from one to five minutes to help with your battery life or something like that that's something you could do here but if you ask me i would prefer to have a shorter cooldown so that you don't you don't miss any kind of events but there is still a cooldown with this camera so just keep that in mind. You can also back up to the ba base station if you have a micro SD card installed in there. Uh, notifications are, you know, it's the same same deal. Get notification for low battery if there's motion. And for detection settings, you have a little bit different options uh, compared to, to the version 2 camera. Uh, what we have is set detection distance, so you can change it from close to far, Remember, we are working with a PIR motion detector on this camera. It doesn't use the camera's image processing like the version 2 does because it, it, these were plugged in and these are battery powered. So it's not going to constantly look through that camera feed for motion. It's going to use that PIR motion sensor. So you have different settings here that you may not be used to and you can change the sensitivity as well. But just keep in mind that there is a detection zone that you can't change because this PIR motion sensor is fixed to the bottom half of the sensor. So what you need to do is, you know, kind of adjust your camera itself where it needs to be to get into that detection zone, which is, as you can see here on the screen, the lower like two thirds of the screen. So get it where you need to go, adjust it, and then change your sensitivity from there. It may take a few days to a week to get it dialed in just right. Advanced settings, uh, we can turn on and off the IR lights, watermark, uh, WISE logo, and we can rotate the image if we need to. And another new feature is called travel mode, which eliminates the need for a base station, but that also, you know, it doesn't allow you to use the camera away from home or view the camera away from home. So it's not a everyday use, but let's say you wanted to take this on vacation with you. I just got back from vacation a few days ago. I wish I had this with me. That would have been Really fun to test with that, oops, with that situation. But what it allows you to do is take your camera and directly connect it to your phone. You can also do it with the base station. If you do take the base station with you, you can have your own little, you know, connected ecosystem away from a local Wi-Fi network and the cloud and allow you to view all your cameras. If you bring the bridge with you in the app, or if you just want to take one camera with you, which is probably what I would do, um, you can just view this camera from the phone directly. So that's another thing I'll be testing. A micro SD card is required for this mode. So yeah, like he says, um, 
no internet connection required. You can set this up anywhere you want. Let's say you're camping in a tent or something. You can set this up right outside um, the tent. And if you hear a noise or something and you just want to pull up the camera feed real quick and see what it was, I believe motion detection also works. So that's a awesome feature I can't wait to test out. And then you have a user manual. The only issue I ran into was having to run the ethernet cable over here, which it won't be as big of a deal for you guys. You can just do this all next to your router or your network switch. It may, it's still a pain to have to do that. There's no, um, you know, built-in Wi-Fi hotspot on board of the bridge. That being said, it was a pretty smooth process and no major roadblocks in the way other than the fact that the camera came dead, but you can't really blame them for that. That's gonna wrap up this video. Make sure you guys are subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the full review of this product. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.